I'm gonna try to get to around 300 in chimps, and if we don't get there in 10 attempts, I'm going to have to shave my beard. Now, this December, Mass Maves made it all the way to around 400, so it should be possible. The only thing is that Maves use the Energizer bug, which no longer exists, and the Sun Temple bug, which I have no idea what that is, and without those, it'll be much harder, but I'm sure we can manage. The first decision we had to make was what hero to use. Now, you may know that Adora is the best ultra late game hero because she gives incredible boost to Sun Avatars, Temples, and Gods, but I still chose Zilli. Why? Well, for Adora to be the best, she needs two things. The first is oodles of money so we can constantly be sacrificing monkeys to her, and the second is a VTSG to maximize her sun boost. And unfortunately, we won't be having either of those. So Azili is the obvious choice as the only thing that'll kill us are bads and her hex is a direct counter to them. So we hopped into logs with absolutely no plan and hit play. This was obviously a mistake, but I thought it'd be funny if we got really far just winging it. All I knew is that I wanted a Sun Temple with primary, magic, and support sacrifices in the hopes of making it a 2-1-2-2 Sun God. So we got a Sun Avatar, an Inferno Ring, two Villages, and a Permabrew. This was a bit of overspending, but it was smoking the rounds and I thought we'd be okay. Which was the case until we hit round 128, where the reinforced DDTs plowed right through, ending the run before it really even started. All right, on to run two, where we decided to be much more thorough about what we'd be sacrificing. Additionally, I thought the Sun Temple bug might be where you sacrifice towers on an Ice Monkey's platform and you get a bunch of money back. So we went through all the pain of getting as many of our sacrifices on the water as possible while also trying to beat the rounds. This added a fair bit of complexity, but we were managing. We had just over 50k worth of primary and support monkeys ready to sacrifice, and admittedly way more magic sacrifices. But the 21 ninja strat was what was keeping us alive and popping all the balloons, so I figured it was worth it. We were pretty excited to see how far this would go, but our run was abruptly ended by just a couple leaking ceramics from the final reinforced DDT. Ugh. Well, third time's the charm. We went back to the Infernal Ring primary expertise combo, but this time added in an Avatar of Wrath instead of a Permabrew. This worked amazing. Most things fit on the water, so we might get some money back. We were defending like champs, but we just couldn't make it all the way to a Sun Temple. At least not by the time DDTs got through on round 151. But with the trend of leaking on rounds that we could have beaten, I finally caved and went to the challenge editor so we could be super frugal and stop choking runs away. Additionally, I tested out the Ice Monkey bug in Chimps and it did not save us any money, so I could stop worrying about that and just play the game. And here's where we struck gold. We went back to the Grandmaster Ninja being buffed by Shinobis and got our 50k worth of support monkeys by buying two villages and an overclock engineer. And we cut out the primary sacrifice so we could afford a Sun Temple before the rounds got too tough. This worked flawlessly and on round 131 we got our first Sun Temple of the day. Now to just buff it with some villages and an overclock engineer. The nice thing about the temple is that it's only a tier 4 monkey, so Overclock has a 100% uptime on it. Next, we got our Grandmaster Ninja back, a bunch of Shinobis, and a Moab Glue to help out. This was nice, but we were struggling against, well, everything. ZOMGs, BADs, and DDTs were all scary, and it was really throwing me for a loop. That is, until we got the Master Bomber. This thing basically permastalled everything except for BADs, which was more what I was expecting going into this run. And now we just had to put the icing on the cake and see how far we could get. We got a Permabrew, an Avatar of Wrath, and even a Total Transformation Alchemist. We were unstoppable, unpoppable, plowing through the rounds until I activated the Total Transformation's ability, and apparently our Arctic Wind Ice Monkey was closer to it than the Druid of Wrath, meaning everything on its ice platform was destroyed and no money was refunded. So just like that, we lost our Permabrew, making us much weaker. And it was only a matter of time until the balloons got through as we were down an entire tier five monkey and it was round 237 that did us in. Now we could have given up. Maybe we should have given up, but instead, I cried myself to sleep, took a day off, and went back at it full force the next afternoon. We started off exactly the same as our big run, but I had one tweak to make it that much better, and that was sacrificing a measly $10,000 of primary monkeys to the Sun Temple on top of our other sacrifices. This doesn't sound like much, but it makes the temple's main attack shoot 43% faster, as well as having more pierce and damage. Plus, it gets these cool golden glaives. This should make a run much easier, right? Wrong. We got hard stuck in round 212 because I used Azili's Hex too close to the end of round 211 and we just weren't able to make ends meet no matter how many retries I used. That's fine. It only took like two hours to get there. We'll just start over and try again. I mean, what are the odds that I make the same mistake twice? Apparently pretty good because this time Mauve Hex was on an even longer cooldown. Ugh. I mean... What are the odds that I do it three times in a row? Ha! Zero! I made sure to get a Grand Saboteur, use its ability right at the start of the round, and lower all seven of these whales' health by 25% so we could pop them all. Easy. 
though round 212 is my least favorite round now. Next, we got our Premabrew, flew it around the map with a support Chinook, and then we worked on some more defenses. Just your typical Avatar of Wrath, some beefy villages, a total transformation alchemist that's placed properly this time, a super brutal cripple mob. I mean, we got it all. I did exclude a glue storm because I wasn't sure how well all of this was being recorded, and I didn't want it to add even more particle effects to the screen, potentially making it blurry, so I hope you'll forgive me. But this brought us to round 256, where we had an unstoppable pack of nine bads just marched through the map. All we could do was spam abilities and pray. Luckily, our master bomber was still permastalling ZOMGs and below, but the bads, man, the bads did not care. Seven of them made it to the final section of the map, but then Azili's Hex came back online and somehow managed to pop every single one of them before wearing off. And that last one was so close, I thought we lost because the screen froze for a second. But no, we continued on because that Hex was clutch. And by carried on, I mean until around 261 where we weren't even close. I mean, 10 bads with half of them being fortified, we didn't stand a chance. Now, at this point, I took a few days off, and before starting run number 8, I looked at Maeve's video to come up with a plan, and I noticed something very interesting. Why does his third Sun Temple cost so little? I mean, even when I have a maxed out support buff on one, it still costs me 86 grand. Maybe the Sun Temple bug and the key to getting to round 300 is to get more than one Sun Temple. And with that in mind, we started again, rushing our first temple. Now, another thing I noticed from his video is that his first temple had a military sacrifice in it and the second one didn't. How interesting. Maybe you need two slightly different sun temples for this bug to work. So my first temple had maxed out support and magic sacrifices, plus a little over $7,500 in military monkeys. This gave it the plane, plus some extra pierce and other benefits. Then my second temple only had maxed out support and magic sacrifices, causing it to be slightly different than our first one. And I must say, having two sun temples was a very welcome boost in popping power, but there were two problems. The first was that I was way behind Maves in money at this point, and the second was that my third sun avatar wasn't as cheap as his, meaning we did something wrong. What that was, I'm not not sure, but I continued on trying to get our third Sun Temple, but I just wasn't able to beat round 204 with this setup. What could we be missing? If our support Sun Temples don't stack, how was Maves getting his third one for so much cheaper? And then it hit me. We've only tested stacking two maxed out support temples, meaning they each give a 20% discount on towers and upgrades in their radii, and they don't stack. However, if we sacrifice the right amount of support monkeys to the second one, it'll only give a 10% discount, and this might stack with our first temple. I wasn't completely sold though. I mean, it'll only decrease the cost of future monkeys and not give us the extra money that Maves talked about, right? Well, let's find out. I started exactly the same as last run, getting a Sun Temple with military magic and support sacrifices. This, along with quite a bit of support, carried until we could afford our second Sun Temple on round 178, which had maxed out magic and a medium amount of primary and support sacrifices. It was quite the upgrade. I never imagined getting a budget Sun Temple, especially in chimps, but wow could I tell the difference. There was only one explanation. The support buff stacked. This was confirmed almost instantly when going for an overclock engineer, as it was significantly significantly cheaper than the ones in the past. Additionally, I felt like we were making money faster than just a few rounds ago. Could this just be in my head, or did we actually figure out the mystical Sun Temple bug that I couldn't find anywhere on the internet? Well, just a few rounds later, and it was clear that we were making way more money than any of our previous runs, and that third Sun Temple was going to be cheaper than ever before. With this in mind, I figured the third temple should be a maxed out one, with the hopes of making it a true sun god later on. There was just one problem. I overspent on non-helpful sacrifices, assuming we'd have the power to clear all the rounds for a while, but this was not the case and we quickly lost in round 202. A very disappointing end to the run, but I did get to look back at the footage to see how much extra money we were making. The lowest increase that I found was round 200, where we made 41% more money than previous runs, and there were several rounds where we made twice as much money. Now, how exactly this works, I'm not sure, but my best guess is that any tower that's affected by both Sun Temples gets the plus 50% more cash from popping balloons, and this stacking gets past the chimp's income barrier for some reason, meaning this is the only way that I know of to make extra money in chimps. And with that, it was time for the final attempt to get to round 300. My nerves were high, but I knew what we had to do. Play it safe and do the Sun Temple bug. 
Once again, we rushed a Sun Temple with magic, military, and support sacrifices. Then we supported it with an Arctic Wind, Pex, Energizer, Overclock, Grand Saboteur, and a Mobe Glue. Then we got a Prince of Darkness and an Unstable Concoction to max out the magic category and only sacrifice the Overclock to be in the right support threshold. This time, I skipped the primary sacrifices, which was probably the wrong call, but I didn't want to be low on money again when going for the third temple. On top of this, I learned my lesson, useful sacrifices only. So I got just over 50k worth of shinobi ninjas and a master bomber inside the sun avatar's range with the plan of moving the grand saboteur out of the way when it was time to sacrifice then i got both villages and an overclock in its range to cap out support and a mob domination plus an ultra jug for the primary category this was the perfect amount and let us get our third sun temple on round 212 the sweet revenge that i needed against this horrible round Side note, one cool thing you can do is Chinook a monkey during the temple's upgrade process and it won't get sacrificed even if it's in range, which is how I saved the energizer each time. Anyway, after the third temple, we were pretty poor and I had to upgrade it to a 420 to beat round 214. This is unfortunate because it means we won't be making it a true sun god as the other sun temples are in its range now, but I don't know if we could have afforded that anyway. After that, we went on to get a primary expertise so our Arctic wind could freeze everything, an ultra boost engineer to make all of our monkeys better with time, and and then I maxed out a Grandmaster Ninja and a Master Bomber with Shinobis, which basically removed anything below bads from the game. Also, between this run and the last one, the new update came out, making our Call to Arms ability global and the Ultra Boost cheaper, which was a conveniently timed buff. Then the saving started. I figured since we can't get a true Sun God anymore, we might as well go for a Paragon, because how sick would that be to get one in Chimps? Time to plop down our three Tier 5 Boomerangs and let them start farming Pops. The save up went on for a long time, and we actually had to get a ton of support to keep getting through the tough rounds. I'm talking a Permabrew, Super Brutal, Cripple Mobe, Avatar of Wrath, Mad, another Call to Arms, and some various other towers. But on round 279, we had enough to get a degree 73 Apex Plasma Master. But we leaked that round, so let's just build that again, and again, and again, and again, and again, and there we go. We finally beat the round because I was so over it enough to use Azili's Mopex at the end of the round just to beat it. A dangerous move, but we lucked out and got a pretty easy round 280. But we did have to use Hex near the end of that round again, leaving it with half its cooldown left going into 281. And holy bads, do we need that Hex. Surprisingly, we were able to make it through and all of our big abilities were on low to no cooldowns, meaning we we're back in it, baby. Or so I thought. I played round 282 for hours, spanning over a week, and I just couldn't get past it. I'm convinced it's possible because there were times that I only leaked a DDT and I had freeze off cooldown. However, this took near perfect RNG as I only got that a couple times and I never timed the freeze right because of how laggy my game was at this point. I mean, there were times that I was getting a frame every few seconds and it made timing abilities impossible, especially when you'd click them and they wouldn't even go off. But that's the story of free play, an overwhelming amount of projectiles and a ton of lag. But boys, that's where I'm calling it. Round 282. I really wanted to get to round 300 so I could share the code, but here are the stats. Easily had the most damage at 831 million. The three sun temples hit 541, 478, and 295 million. The ninjas were at 359 and 143. The Glaive Dominus hit 91 million after just a couple rounds, and just about everything else was in the millions too. I mean, even Bob the Builder hit the seven figure mark, which is actually pretty impressive. But a deal's a deal. The beard came off. If you guys liked this video, you'd probably like this one right here, where I try to blackboard a cubism without reusing a single monkey or hero.